why an amendment was issued to fix that issue. So I know there was a lot of cross-examination about the old versus the new. We're here on an appeal of the amended trespass. So whatever was on the original one, it's, it's frankly, it's not relevant. That's not, that, was, that was withdrawn, he appealed the amended. Uh, the trespass warning was issued by a law enforcement officer. Deputy Pena testified as such. She's sworn law enforcement. And pursuant to the ordinance, she received a written statement uh, describing the violation, which is also in evidence. Uh, we know it was accepted via certified mail. We know he's mentioned a couple times the appellant how if he had been the one to answer the door, he wouldn't have accepted it. And that, that's, that's not the way it worked out. It, it was accepted. He was served with it. And that, that's unfortunate for him. But he, he was served. So again, the, the only issue in this tribunal is was the trespass properly issued pursuant to 66.159. And the burden is preponderance of the evidence. So I submit that we've exceeded that burden. Um, now, I can't not comment on that the appellant has made a lot of reference today to the constitutionality of the tax collector's policy. He believes that their policy violates the First Amendment. I want to be very clear, as I stated in the beginning of the hearing, this is not the proper forum to litigate that issue. This is a quasi-judicial body with limited to authority to determine if the trespass was properly issued. Declaring a constitutional officer's policy unconstitutional, that's clearly a judicial function that needs to be hashed out in the courts. It is a textbook judicial function to declare something unconstitutional. So there is a case that I provide to the appellant as well as the hearing officer uh, Canning versus Board of Public Instruction of Alachua County. It's 278 Southern 2nd, 260. It's a Florida Supreme Court case from 1973. Just for that point, they say, as a general rule, administrative agencies have no general judicial powers, notwithstanding they may perform some quasi-judicial duties, and the legislature, which in this instance would be the Board of County Commissioners, may not authorize officers or bodies to exercise powers which are judicial in their nature. So again, declaring a policy unconstitutional is a violation of the First Amendment. That, that's a judicial function. And he's all but said, he has said, he just said in his testimony just now that he's here to test the, tax, the constitutionality of the policy. But he's in the wrong place. And he seems to be very confused on that. If he believes the policy is unconstitutional, he needs to sue them. He needs to bring them to federal court and make a First Amendment challenge. It's not proper to backdoor that through a quasi-judicial trespass appeal hearing. Um, However, I know he's going to make the arguments. He's made the arguments all morning. So while I maintain that you have no authority uh, to declare their policy unconstitutional, I do want to address the issue. Um, you know, first and foremost, he just stood up here and said he hasn't read it. So he just spent three and a half hours arguing that it's not constitutional, and he has not read the policy. That's his testimony. So how he could know whether it passes constitutional merit or not is, is beyond my comprehension. But I would submit that Mr. Kuwait's testimony very much established that this is a valid time, place, and manner restriction. Uh, the full policy is in evidence. Uh, it states within the policy that it's in place to protect the confidentiality of records and documents exempt from public disclosure and to ensure office operations are not disrupted for our customers. This is very consistent with the testimony we heard today as well. It doesn't restrict video recording altogether. It just says you have to get prior approval. They, within the policy, reserve the right to deny if it is determined that the recording may interfere with office operations. So there was a lot of testimony from the three witnesses from the tax collector's office this morning that what appellant does, and I know he disagrees, he's gonna get up here and disagree, but what he does when he sets up the tripod right in front of the gatekeeper, it does exactly that. It disrupts their operations, where customers are checking in, giving over their confidential information, their driver's license number, that is exempt from disclosure. So clearly it's a valid time, place, and manner restriction. There was talk this morning about the uh, federal case, Sheets versus City of Punta Gorda. A copy was provided to the appellant as well as to the hearing officer. And the site is 415 Federal Supplement uh, 3D1115. It's from the Middle District of Florida of 2019. And I know uh, Mr. Felix has already argued that, that it's, uh, it's different from this situation and doesn't apply. I, I submit a review of that case that is actually directly on point. Uh, the city of Punta Gorda had adopted an ordinance that restricted video recording in City Hall without the consent of the person being recorded. Mr. Sheets wanted to test out the ordinance. 
Uh, so he showed up, video record, and was trespassed. And in order to test the ordinance, he did exactly what he was supposed to do, and he filed a federal complaint, which again was not done in this instance. Um, so in that opinion, the district court cites to the 11th uh, Judicial Circuit, the Federal Circuit, uh, in a case, Blodorn v. Grube, 631 Federal 3rd, 1218, it's a 2011 case, where the, our appellate federal court in our jurisdiction said, it is now clear that the First Amendment does not guarantee access to property just because it's owned by the government. The government can control its property for the use to which it is lawfully dedicated. And the court in that case, uh, in Sheets versus Punta Gorda, found that City Hall qualified, uh, constituted what's called a limited public forum. It's very different than a traditional public forum, like a park or a sidewalk, which has greater First Amendment protections and probably would not end up in this situation in a park and a sidewalk. But a limited public forum exists where the government has reserved it for a certain group for the discussion of certain topics, such as the tax collector's office, where as there was testimony in the record today, their customers go there for very specific business, the functions to pay their taxes and whatever other agencies the tax collector has uh, contracted with. So if people are going there with legitimate business. It's not like a park where anyone can just show up to hang out as much as uh, Mr. Felix wants to argue that it is. So, the standard that's set is challenges to government restrictions and limited public forums. They're not subject to strict scrutiny. Rather, you must, the government must show that the restriction is reasonable and viewpoint neutral. And the uh, middle district of Florida in that case found that the Punta Gorda ordinance was reasonable because the purpose of City Hall is to conduct legitimate public business. Which I would argue, and Mr. Kuhut testified, the exact same, true, the exact same holds true for the tax collector's office. It's not a traditional public forum. It serves a legitimate biz, uh, function where people go to conduct business. Uh, in Sheets, they also cited to a Supreme Court of the United States case, Cornelius v. the NAACP Legal Defense and Education Fund. That's a 1985 case in which the US Supreme Court stated, it follows that the government has the right to exercise control over access to the government workplace in order to avoid interruptions to the performance of the duties of its employees. And that's exactly what the tax collector's office has done. They've testified that a Palin and folks like him that come in with the tripod and the video camera, it disrupts and interferes with their business operations. And the court uh, in that case went so far as to say, in the Punta Gorda case, if the ordinance simply prevented all recording as opposed to recording without consent, it would probably be reasonable for the same reasons. So they even said that even if you have a policy that restricts all recording, and the tax collector, they haven't done that. They've said it's allowed, you just have to get our consent first. But the court even said if it restricted all recording in a limited public forum, it would probably be reasonable for the same reasons. So uh, they go on to say, while Sheets is correct that City Hall is open to the public, such as the tax collector's lobby, he ignores that it's open to the public to conduct legitimate business, and the city may limit the use of the property to ordinary conditions for its intended purpose. So the tax collector's office, uh, besides uh, being reasonable, it also passes that second prong uh, of being viewpoint neutral. It applies to anyone who shows up with a camera without prior approval. It doesn't matter if it's a journalist, a member of the media, a nun, a Nazi, someone with a YouTube channel. It doesn't matter. It doesn't target a specific viewpoint. And for that matter, it, it passes constitutional muster. Um, the only other thing I'll, I'll add is that uh, Mr. Felix has indicated that he's got a bunch of case law that he's prepared to argue. None of that's been provided to the county, and we provided him and the hearing officer um, a number of cases yesterday. So uh, to that extent, he has copies that would request them. I'll let me know any information you A little late. <laughs> that's all. <clears throat> OK. Start off with uh, on the summary he gave you. It says appellant was recording within the office. Again, a public lobby and an office are two different things. I didn't go in any private offices, and the officers were allowed to go into the private offices because they're one of the good guys. They can come in and they can record in there. And he testified that he didn't realize he was recording, or else he would have told him to shut it off. But he turned a blind eye to all good cops. Um, 
So the public lobby is not an office, as this says here. Uh, the policy, the video recording policy they have on the internet is not posted. And this disruption they keep trying to bring up it was no one had issue with me up until the moment they decided to stop serving the public. No one said nothing to me, no one had an issue with me. Their actions they took disrupted the business. Again, I'm standing here peacefully recording. As far as me reading their video policy off their inter internet, like you said, I know I have a First Amendment right to record in public. And anywhere the general public's allowed to go, the press is allowed to go. I believe that's Brandsburg v. Hayes. Um, procedural defect, cure the defect. Okay, so as soon as Anthony was there recording, they decided to enact a policy that day that they conveniently copied and pasted from the Manatee County's website. Uh, after speaking to the... You need to limit your testimony to what, or your argument to what's already in evidence. I don't think there's any testimony as to when or why that policy was adopted. He tested, he said, I have a video clip, he said... Today, he, he didn't say anything about it was after that incident. Well, he said it's enacted, this actually went into effect today, those were his words. The day of the day they trespassed him. It's almost as if they did it just to get rid of him. That wasn't testified to today. Mr. Kouet testified that, I can show you the video if you'd like, that he said this video recording policy was enacted today. Facts not evidence? Yeah, that's the same. I don't think those facts are in evidence anymore. I have the video. Would you like to see the video? You may close an argument. It's based on the evidence that was presented during the hearing. Because I didn't get to present it during evidence time, is what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, well, it's not really relevant anyway, regardless, it's public information, it's out in the public, anyone can look it up. He said this policy was enacted today. Okay. Um, they changed the trespass warning to include any policy. So first, the law says, has to be done through some sort of legislative body, a county commissioner, a federal something. I could read you the list if you need them, but you get the gist of what I'm saying. Say that again? The, the law is that when they put up a sign, like for instance, the first sign says, this is a private area. That's false on its face. And the fact that they can act as a legislative body and use their departmental policy to violate my rights is it's got their, if that's not wrong, I don't know what is. That nobody elected these people to do this thing. No one make, gives them the authority to create laws and policies in order to trespass people for engaging in their rights. Um, the recording policy was not posted. The one they're claiming is on the internet was not posted that day. Only the driver, Exhibit G, the Driver Protection Privacy Act. Um, also, in the 66159, got here. With all due respect, how do you know if it was posted or not? If you I was there. If you don't know what's on their website. Oh, I don't know about their, no. So it it was not on the wall. On the it's not on the wall. It could have been on the website, but it's definitely not on the wall. That's what I'm saying. How do you know that? I was there. Okay. Uh, I believe this court or whatever you call it, hearing, has to look at the totality of the circumstances. The totality, and it says right here under section B, 66159B, the gravity of alleged violation. So the gravity is two guys standing still, waiting to hand over paperwork, and he turned it into this. This is ridiculous. For simply trying to record a 30 second transaction. What, what section are you reading? This is 66159. B, the initial determination by authorized personnel that a trespass warning is needed may take into consideration the facts and circumstances of the individual situation, including but not limited to the following. The gravity of alleged violation. So the gravity is two guys dropping off documents who want to have an objective record of that. Otherwise, they have no way to get it. Uh, let's see. The harm or under number four, the harm or potential harm to the public property threatened by respondents' actions. And if you look at, uh, let's see here, see decision issue trespass. 
Uh, limited public forum is under strict constitutional uh, scrutiny. You can't just, again, create department policy out of the whole cloth and use it to trespass anyone you feel like. They, that would mean they could say no Christians. That would mean they could say no blacks because they're just creating department policy and they're telling the cops this is our policy. So yeah, if I'm black and it says no blacks, that's not a legitimate policy. There's no law, there's nothing cited, nothing from the county was passed. Again, the management from the tax collector's office is creating these policies out of whole cloth and they're just slapping laws on there and they're writing this is a private place. These are false on their face. And I don't need to read the policy to know that I have a right to record in public. There's plenty of case law. Smith vs. Cummings, also Smith vs. Cummings, Georgia. Uh, the general public is allowed to gather and record the public officials for matters of public interest. I was there to gather information for matters of public interest. Also, the uh, limited forum is uh, you can't be expressive. Um, you can't yell, this place is an extortion racket. You can't say, we're all here under duress. You have to maintain order, which we did. We did nothing but stand there, listen to exactly what the receptionist said, stood to the side, and nothing was disrupted. No business was disrupted. Nothing was being recorded, and nobody was bothered up until the point where they decided to stop serving the public and blame us for it, inciting the heckler's veto, and inciting someone to threaten physical injury to me. Uh, also under E, it says trespass must designate with specificity which of the following laws, rules, regulations, and policies have been violated. And if you see the list here, one through eight, this is county, county, state, Florida, statute, United States policy. It has nothing, nothing in here says the department could just make up their own policy and it holds the same weight as law. And that's basically what they're allowing them to do. Um, I think it does say that E8 county rule or policy posted at the public property. County, right. That's not a county rule, it's department. They do, their management team created that policy. Didn't pass through any legislative body. They're a county office. They're a county office, they're a county department. It's a department policy. Okay. I don't believe uh, the, the amended trespass was given to me on the 9th, I don't know, something like that. And then we showed up to his office on the 15th and I have a video clip where he says, I still have not received that and I believe in 66159, they have one business day to get that trespass over to Mr. Bondi and he claims that he didn't get it until almost five or six days later. And it wasn't at his office and his receptionist didn't get it and nobody there got it. If you need to see that video, I'll gladly show it. Um, what were you citing about the time frame? I'm sorry, sir? You were citing the, the law or code about the time frame? Yeah, they, they must. Okay, so it's a uh, I, let's see here. 66159I. Law enforcement officer shall forward a copy of the trespass within the next business day after issuance to each of the following the designee of the Pasco County Sheriff, the designee of the county administrator that keeps tracks of trespass warnings, and the county attorney's office within one business day. I was served, oh, well, I wasn't served. A person at my house signed for it that wasn't me, so I wasn't served technically. And then five or six days later, we went to uh, submit the appeal in his office, and he said he still hadn't received it. So under I, he should have had it in one business day. Okay. Um, let's see here. What else you got? Number seven, First Amendment rights acknowledged. The special magistrate having continuing jurisdiction to consider an authorized respondent to enter public property that is the subject of trespass warning to exercise his or her First Amendment rights. If there's no other reasonable alternative location to exercise such rights or to conduct necessary government business, such authorization shall be through the order of the special magistrate shall specify the duration of the authorization and conditions thereof shall not be unreasonably denied. But if you can uh, not unreasonably deny me to go exercise my First Amendment rights, that's what I was doing in the first place. That's what I was already doing. And the, for them to say I need permission from them, that's like saying 
there's a government entity that that uh, can restrict you from worshiping. If you sit there and pray in the DMV's office, they're going to kick you out. It's in the same First Amendment. If you're allowed to stand and assemble, and if freedom of religion, and you sit there and pray in the DMV's office, then I should be allowed to record it. It's in the same context. You, you don't need uh, a license to exercise your religion, your speech. You shouldn't need a license or permission to exercise your First Amendment right. When they do send me letters to my house, they put Mr. Huffman's name on it. That's one of the documents there. Uh, the DPPA has nothing to do with the general public's right to record. It's people who have access to the motor vehicle database are not allowed to, are not allowed to disclose certain information. That doesn't mean you can restrict somebody's rights to assemble, to be free, to have free press, in order to uh, keep the records private. Again, it's an architectural issue. Put up a, a, a thing that nobody had a problem putting up plastic walls everywhere during COVID. If you have an issue here where it's constitution, create a little pathway that's private and separate so we can't hear and see what the people are doing. Make the privacy for them. It's not a, in other words, that would also be like saying anyone who can hear must wear these ear muscles when you come in here or you have to block your ears. Because you can hear information coming from the motor vehicle database. It's an architectural issue, and they're trying to resolve it this way, and through this proceeding, and waste a lot of time and money, rather than just put up a wall and create the place so it has the privacy they need, so they can be in compliance with the Driver Protection Privacy Act. It's a misrepresentation of the DPPA is deceiving and should be removed from any and all DMVs who try to falsely present this as a recording policy. It's not a recording policy. And they've since removed it. They're like, they're using us as guinea pigs to get it right, to finally get the people they don't want in there out of there. Again, public lobby is not an office. And if it is an office, and I'm not allowed to report in there, then you shouldn't be able, the cops or nobody else should be allowed to go behind the clerks where all this sensitive information is and record. Again, they revise their trespass thing to include slash policy posted. First, it's like it says in the, in the ordinance, county policy posted, which would have to be a, something that passed through the county, not just made out of whole cloth from this department. Um, Bear with me here. Is that the only change to the board? That is the only change, yes. That's the only change. Again, no, that's, that's that, when you look. I'm sorry. Where your address is. I'm sorry? Compare the two forms where your address is. So there's a change there. So there oh, you mean their writing specifically? No, I mean the form. So. So. December 18th, it was, was the last. My address? Issued to John, yeah. They put your address instead of the location address. Yes, what they wrote is different also, but I'm talking about the form itself. Oh. You're talking about the parts that they filled in, correct? Yeah, issue to name and it has your name. Yeah. Look at the first form after. Yeah, it has their the tax collector's address. Okay. So that same one they had in issue two address, meaning the <coughs> person that was issued the citation to clarify what address it was there. Correct. But that's not the only thing that changed. Yes, what they wrote has changed. They put my, the correct address. They've revised the form. They've revised the form itself is what I'm getting at. Yeah, me too. So, okay. I'm not saying they revised the information they input it in. I'm saying you take this form and it's blank. They're both blank. The first one is different from the second one with, even if they're both blank. This one was revised in 2018. It says specifically a county policy, not a department policy. It has to go through some type of scrutiny in order to be valid. You can't just write anything you want and have a sign company create it. And then the second one, 
right after they trespassed me, they amended the blank form to say county policy slash policy posted. Just throw it in there like it's a catch-all. And I don't believe that is kosher, however you want to put it. So, also, um, Dade City Police. Dade City is in Pasco County, right? Okay, right. So, Dade City has a policy right here. Right here, Dade City Police Department. As a general matter, the law is well settled. Audio and video recording of law enforcement officers constitutionally protected speech subject only to reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions. And if you guess you want to go to limited public forum, limited public forum is still under the scrutiny, uh, still under constitutional scrutiny. You can't just make a policy that a bunch of managers got together and made. It has to pass constitutional scrutiny. With limited exception, private individuals have the right to observe and record members carrying out their law enforcement duties. The right applies not only to activities occurring in public spaces, but activities occurring anywhere the individual who's recording has the right to be present. I have the right to be present in a public lobby in the tax collector's office. Thus, I have the right to record. Um, uh, public record. Photography, including video and audio recording of individuals, places, and events common with limited exceptions are lawful activities. The right to record is not just limited to streets and sidewalks, but includes any other public or private facility where individuals have the legal right to be present. Again, that's Brandsburg v. Hayes. There's no special access for being uh, press. Anywhere the public's allowed to be, the press is allowed to be and engage in free press. Citizen has the same right to take photographs or recordings as a member of the media, as long as a citizen has a legal right to be present where he or she is located. And of course I have a legal right I went in, asked, I stood to the side, just like she told me, he'll be right out. I wanted to record the transaction. Instead, it's turned into this. Uh, recordings of, of the members in public. Again, this is Dade City. This is the, how they train their police. So this probably wouldn't even happen if it was Dade City. Public setting includes parks, sidewalks, streets, and locations of public protests. That protection also extends to individuals' home or business common areas of public and private facilities and buildings. I think I've been more, more than lenient with you, but I don't really see how they take this policy wisely. Uh, they understand that you're allowed to record in public in public places. They understand that anywhere the public's allowed to be so as a cameraman. That's the relevance there. Again, the signs. They've taken down the sign. Now they've just basically made up their own policy. And, you're, and it's almost given the same weight as, as a county ordinance. This is not an ordinance. This is something they sat down and probably said, we don't want these guys here. We don't want people recording here, and they're using disruptive as an excuse, and they're using gathering of information, but there's not even one case you can mention where someone gathered uh, uh, da uh, data from the database and disclosed it to the public. The DPPA says you cannot disclose. So just the, the fact that I'm gathering, even if I was recording a document right on the desk, until I disclose that to somebody, no law has been broken. And you see, they took down the DPPA off the front door and they made it into this, and it's, it's all just a convoluted mess. That's why you, you, don't, you don't steer away from the Constitution. Those guys weren't dumb. They know the true meaning of freedom. Again, I don't believe it was delivered within one business day, as according to the ordinance. So the amended trespass claim they used claims that they used my driver's license to ID me. I've never handed my driver's license to anybody. So they must have found a database that had my information on it and used that information to fill out this amended trespass. I have not given anyone my driver's license. Um, the rescinded trespass claims I was, I was trespassed for violating the video recording 
policy of a location. The policy was never even up. Again, they copied and pasted it from Manatee. The DPPA is not their policy. It's a law. It has nothing to do with video recording. 